So this video is sponsored by Pionex, one of the exchanges I use all the time. It's one of the main crypto brokers to Binance, so the volume is very high. The main thing that sets them apart though is that you can use free trading bots, a variety all designed to benefit from different market behaviors, whether that's up, down or sideways. You'll get 20% off all your trading fees for life with my link in the description. And if you join the Telegram, a lot of us already use it, so if you've got questions, we can try and help you out. Good morning everybody, welcome to the roughest video you'll ever see. So this is me on my old laptop. So I've been away for Easter, so it's been very difficult for me to find time, never mind the Wi-Fi strength to even make a video, so I'll give it my best shot, okay? So as we all know, Bitcoin has now poked its head above um, 30,000 with a peak so far of 30,430. So far so good, I have to say. And also, as I expected, you've got to trust the Ichimoku conversion baseline cross above the cloud, given us that trend signal on the daily, which is still in play. Um, it will be cancelled out, though, when the Chiku Spend touches price action. And lucky for us, we did make this move over the last few days because we were getting quite close to touching price action. If we were to come down and and close below 27,380 today, it would say that this trend has now come to an end. Yesterday, we could have dumped all the way down to 25,000, and um, I suppose early last week, we could have dumped all the way down to 21,000 and have the trend still in play. So the trend is still in play. The red, however, is getting closer towards the blue, so the trend is likely to come to an end at some point soon. It doesn't mean that this trend ends up or results in a dump that's not what it means it does mean that you know for anyone who entered the entry point then you would be looking to scale out at this for an exit point when it comes to general momentum we're finding our first green histogram tick above the zero point which is good the rsa the rsis is relatively high but doesn't mean anything to be honest with you so far it's looking to build a new base above here otherwise if it doesn't that would be a nice drive of bearish divergence but for the moment you know we'll wait for to see where the candle body closes with the rsi so we don't get that bearish divergence bearish divergence is almost certainly going to be uh, um, uh, present on the money flow index all on the daily though so that would be two drives uh, so far from this uh, from this uh, move up now it comes to uh, uh, momentum and, and uh, money flow on the um, on the four hourly we do actually have it on the four hourly two on the money flow index one two three drives now and on the rsi we basically have had it cancelled out so the money flow index does count for something but the rsi would be more well it, it would be more it would it would mean more if we had the various divergence there so as far as we're concerned here we're trending up and we're moving up towards well we're in the 30s now aren't we the, the target was always going to be roughly around 32,000 with the monthly uh, Bollinger Band Center sitting around 32,421 roughly give or take so that's where I'd look for like a major resistance and maybe a major pullback at that point doesn't mean dump could mean consolidation, it could just mean static sideways, and that could also mean pullback on the dominance chart and continuation on the total market cap too, which is you know all crypto excluding Bitcoin. So that's still a bullish chart. We still haven't actually broken out of this range. So we're kind of range bound pushing the resistance here. We're on a four hourly, just take it to a to a daily. You can see that obviously I'm using a, a really crap laptop here, but uh, this is all I've got basically, and I'm hot spotting from my phone to get it <laughs> to get the internet, um, and I'm actually in my car as well. This is this is how we roll when we're on holidays. So yeah, we're basically pushing the resistance here. So if we break this area now, it's basically 620 billion. If we break that, then we'll be moving up to our first major target around 700 billion. And if you break that, then actually we do see some serious moves. So we are pushing this resistance right now, hopefully looking to break it. The dominance chart has actually continued to break out further. We'll be coming to the next major top on this range bound area, which is 48, almost just short 49% dominance where we would still be looking for a pullback on that, to be honest with you, uh, at that level. Anywhere within this range is reasonable. So I did 10% here, 10% here. I did another 5% here. I'll allocate another 5% at the top into alts from the Bitcoin that I bought at 21,000. 21,500 that would be. 
Quick look at traditional markets as the, obviously they are open once again. So this is a euro on the weekly, still looking to trend and continue up. I actually like the way that it looks. Obviously, it looks very good. I have no real reason to doubt that this is going to continue to uh, to move up. We're in a descending channel at the moment. Descending channels will likely break out rather than down. I think we're going to break out of this channel. Or it remains to be seen, but we'll, but for the moment, that's that's my expectation. Because I'm only, I don't even have a mouse here. I'm using my, my laptop keypad. There's no point in me trying to, <laughs> to draw the formation for you. It will be all over the place. This is the S&P, obviously, on its previous um, uh, candle body closure. So uh, we don't want S&P. We'll have uh, US 500, which is going to be the futures market to capital.com. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're basically unchanged on the day, uh, but if we just look at this on a weekly, uh, now we can see a little clearer. Now we've got all my noise turned off. Remember I said that this is likely to be the bottom. People found it quite hard to recognize that at the time, but hopefully now a few months have gone by, it does look a little bit more likely that that is the bottom. I mean, I'm not saying that it is, but it does look a little bit more likely that it is. Broken the, des uh, the descending trend line, we're in a period of accumulation, that looks like a serious low, and we're going to be fannying around in this sideways um, area for quite quite a while, I would imagine. Maybe, maybe we'll find a, a, a new local high to make it feel like an uptrend, and at that point maybe we'll consolidate further and come back down to the range lows, uh, roughly around 30... Well, not 30, 3,800, give or take. So range bound in here, I reckon, for the majority of this year into next year. Um, but it's going to be, to be honest, it's, it's not as simple as looking at the chart. There is going to be other reasons for it. Stocks not looking particularly hot at the moment because of the Taiwan situation. Oh, I'm probably going to get pulled off the internet just for saying the word. But but yeah, that's, that's had an impact on stock prices. But usually, usually, if these things don't materialise into anything particular, you know, anything, it's just basically like a buzzword, like some news or something like that, then stocks will get bought back up again. So yeah, we saw that sort of messing about yesterday in traditional markets and I don't really see a problem um, on the chart, really. Fundamental, yeah. Something might come of that, obviously, later on down the line. And people re will revisit these videos and go, Ah, a new low! How did you not predict? How, did, how could you not see the unforeseen? And I said, well, I just honestly use charts. My crystal ball, it doesn't work. Um, so anyway, that is basically that. So I am still very much the same as I've been all last week uh, and the week before, which is that this trend signal is an important one. Allow for the trend to continue. Allow for the uptrend to continue. And then um, when we get told that the uptrend is finished, we will play it safe. And we all still, we could still actually be looking for alt seasons because if, um, if uh, you remember rightly, Again, you'll have to wait till I get back home on Wednesday to make some of these real videos of all my proper analysis. But if you remember, the Bitcoin dominance chart has the same itchy card setup as Bitcoin. So they'll probably cancel out at the same time. And a cancellation of the uh, the signal, um, the uptrend signal on Bitcoin and the Bitcoin dominance chart might actually be the start of an alt season. That's when I'd be looking to rotate the like a full 20%. So with a full allocation at that point of 50% of the Bitcoin that I bought down at these lower zones down here. Um, that would be the that would be the strategy. Remember, scaling in, scaling out is always the best way. Never be all in, never be all out. So scaling in, scaling out. So I'd be looking to allocate a further 5% here, and then at the cancellation of the trend signal, a full 20% will be going in just in case we actually get the old season. Crazier things have happened, guys. I don't know if anyone was around uh, for the, for uh, some of these uh, previous alt seasons, but when I called the top on the dominance chart over here and rotated an enormous amount of Bitcoin into altcoins, making thousands of percent, um, Bitcoin actually was coming down. Bitcoin actually pulled back by 25 to 30%, while altcoins rallied thousands of percent. So stranger things have happened. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's for me, it's worthy of uh, committing... Uh, another 20% into the market if we get that cancellation of a trend signal and we get a dump looking for um, at that point looking for Bitcoin to either stay static or consolidate and altcoins actually rally but until we see that signal and we see signs of that setup materializing then uh, it's just a potential setup that we can think about and wait for and look for evidence of when it happens. Right, thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Join me on Telegram. Otherwise, have a nice day. Take it easy.